Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the introduction episode of my sim shenanigans. Now, big huge thank you for your overwhelming excitement and positivity on my, you know, announcement video if you like. And I wanted to do an introduction video because each of these sims that you see in front of you have a back story. Each of them have their own little reasons for being here and I thought it was really important that we find out why. So we're going to spend some time with each of the sims, find out a bit more about them, their personalities and everything else and see where they are living and then in the next episode we are going to take it from there. Now this series is going to have a schedule. I know that I'm a bit all over the place sometimes <laughs> with my uploading. However, you always get regular uploads, but you just don't really know what's coming. So on a Wednesday and a Sunday, you will get a brand new episode of each of these. So you'll have two of these a week, and I'm going to be working on the upload schedule for the other videos as well. If you're just catching my channel for the first time, hi, I'm Laura, and I'll put a link below to the introduction video or the announcement so you can find out a bit more about this. But essentially, in a nutshell and really quickly, it's four families that we are going to play through in one LP. So it's like a four in one <laughs> LP. So, yeah, so without further ado, let's meet our first Sims, and they are the Klepto Queens. Alrighty, and first up is our beautiful Klepto Queens. And the Klepto Queens are our three girls, three best friends, best friends, best friends, and three Kleptomaniacs. Now, these girls all started out as petty criminals in their early life, stealing gum from their local store or plants from their neighbour's yard. And it didn't really matter what they stole, they just loved the rush that it gave. And eventually, that gum turned to clothes and that plant to cars basically and the girls get caught and sent to juvenile detention which is where they met. Now I'll just take you through each of them, tell you a bit about their backstory. Now Melissa, this is her here, Melissa Summers, she's flirty, rebellious, commitment issues, a kleptomaniac and charismatic and she's a cancer, she loves Egyptian music, waffles and the colour white. Now her mother left her dad when she was only five years old and her dad was an alcoholic so basically pretty useless at looking after her so she basically brought herself up and at first when she stole stealing was the only way that she could survive but she couldn't deny that she loved to steal. Uh, she's got major commitment issues because she's seen the destruction that marriage caused to you know, her family and things like that. She, she has no interest in marriage or kids or any of that stuff. She basically has a use them and lose them approach to love and her lifetime goal is to be a heartbreaker and she wants to be the girlfriend of 10 different sims. So that is her lifetime wish and her overall goal. Our next sim is a Christina Ferreira, which I know you'll recognise, or you should recognise anyway, from my, uh, what do you call it, my winter, winterlicious sim, this is her here. I'll probably take you out and show you her clothes, you'll see it as we go along, but that's her and she's gorgeous, she's a great kisser, she's unstable, she's good, she's a kleptomaniac and she's a diva. I've chosen the unstable trait because of her backstory, but also because I've never played it, so I think it'll be quite interesting. Now, Christina was in care for the majority of her life and Basically, the reason for her starting stealing was she was trying to steal for protection because in the care unit that she was in, there was a whole bunch of really bad kids, like like bad, bad kids. And the only way to survive was to either be one of them, and she was never a fighter. She's a lover, not a fighter. Or, you know, pay for them to leave you alone. So that's why she started to steal and she wanted to be in the good books with them. And it's just like everything, once you sort of start, you struggle to stop. And that is Christina's Christina's story. But she's she's a funky girl. She likes her, her tight trousers. These girls are all gorgeous. Gorgeously dressed, gorgeously put together. And they've also got their own quirks. And she likes pop music, grilled salmon and the colour spice berry. And she is an Aries. And that is her. Now, our lovely girl with her back to us here and the funky nails is our Whitney James. She is funky. Look at the little leopard print little print bra there shown in that outfit. And uh, she actually comes from a large and very loving family. And 
it was just an impulse for her. The whole stealing thing is just an impulse that she cannot, she can't help. It's not something she's tried. She's been to therapy countless numbers of times and she just cannot shake the habit. And basically that's that's her in a nutshell. She is awesome. She's a social butterfly. She's a night owl. She's neat. She's got a photographer's eye and of course she's a kleptomaniac. Loves the colour Irish green, goopy carbonara food and electronica and she is a Taurus as well. Are they all Taurus? No. No they're not. Right, let's get back to Whitney. So that is our Whitney. Our foxy. Our foxy Whitney. She's got leopard print sandals on as well. <laughs> Love her. Now these girls became best friends in juvenile detention like absolutely best friends and they were totally inseparable they protected each other they looked after each other they looked out for each other so they totally love each other um once they left juvie they tried to go their separate ways because you know they each had a goal they each had a dream she wants to be a blog artist whitney wants to be a blog artist um i forgot to say what christina wanted no christina is a blog artist beg your pardon and well whitney wanted to steal because that was just that was just in her but they did try and go go it legit for a while but they find it so difficult to get jobs because people people are really you know not keen to hire thieves so it's a kind of struggle to get a job whenever you've been in prison in the first place but when it's been for something to do with thievery it can make it pretty difficult so what they have done is they've all came back together and they've moved into the town area in Ann Arbor and they've decided that they are going to make their lives better and they are going to steal their way to a fortune. That's what they've decided to do, they steal their way to a fortune and at the moment they live in a fairly small apartment which is here. It is basically right in the centre of town but it's across from a couple of clubs, you know, a bar and grill, it's, it's near it's near a subway station so it's it's a decent, it's an okay area. You know, it's an okay area of the kind of city part of it. And I actually like this apartment quite a bit. Oh, come on. Let, let, let me see them. Thank you. And here it's here. There we go. So this is the apartment. And I was actually laughing because my Sims, one of her Sims has actually moved into this apartment in Ann Arbor as well. So I thought that was hilarious because I'd already moved these girls in here. So great taste, my as always. And um, so you enter here and it has, you know, this sort of living area with the, the corner the corner sofa and a gorgeous view. I mean let's let's face it, they do have a gorgeous view. For the, oh well, they would have a gorgeous view if I can, you know, do the camera correctly. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I mean, it is a really nice apartment. It's small though, and that's something that they want to to cope with, you know, to get rid of that smallness. They've got a little kitchen area over here, and then they have their bathroom. And the bathroom that we went for with three girls trying to get ready in the morning, a toilet and a shower wasn't going to cut it, so we just went for the all-in-one. Um. I didn't know you could woohoo in a lift. Well, there you go. Um, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to put all the lights on. Okay, they obviously are on. And then you've got a little workstation over here, you know, with a computer and whatnot. And then over here is two single beds. Now, they haven't really assigned beds because they are young girls. Therefore, romance is going to be on the cards. And everyone knows you can't woohoo in a single bed in the sims anyway <laughs> so yeah so we thought we had to have a double bed so there's one bedroom you know whoever's got the man or whoever's got the the love or whatever they'll be using this room and then the other two will just you know go where they go basically so there's not really assigned rooms the three of them are used to living in the same room sleeping in the same room anyway so pretty much that's you know, that's kind of what is, is going on here. And that is what they've done. Now, you may think it's a strange place to kind of put a bed facing that way. But, you know, I'd love, if that was me, I would face my bed towards there. Because it would be great to just sit on the bed and look out the window to the, the park. You know, reading a book or, or something like that. And there's another desk area down there as well. Nice big windows. Really, really nice big windows. So that is basically... That is basically them and that is their flat and I just love these girls like seriously they're so stylish, they're cute, they're funky 
and we're going to just have so much fun just stealing our way to a fortune i'm going to reduce some money down as well probably going to give them about two thousand simoleons oh and we can see how we go with these guys but this is our Kleto queens all right and here we have miss reina westfall now she is what you saw in the clip as the day carer and reina comes from the prestigious westfall family of bridgeport it's a family full of high flyers doctors lawyers high ceos businessmen etc and the same was expected of our reina here she was an only child and she was extremely lonely because she didn't have any brothers and sisters but her parents just really didn't care I guess I mean they cared in their own way but they didn't really know how to be mum and a dad they were far too busy out and about at events and things like that and she had no interaction with any children at all so she went to school um, her only saving grace was her nanny Ruth she had a nanny who took care of her and she was her only saving grace and she kept her comforted in you know company when her mum and dad were out and about and Ruth really did show Raina that you can be loving you can be affectionate otherwise Raina wouldn't be as balanced as she is today if it wasn't for Ruth and Raina's confidence grew she was a good good student she's a bookworm so she attended school on a daily basis and she just couldn't really find what career she wanted they were pushing her towards you know a ceo this designer you know some big position but all she really wanted was to be like ruth she wanted to be the light in a child's life you know so when the parents are busy ruth kept her sane kept her happy and she wanted to be like that and in her head she's a hopeless romantic you know she wanted to have have a family of her own but she also wanted to be like Ruth and this is why she's decided to be a day carer and she's came to like I said she's came to um oh my goodness Ann Arbor <laughs> <laughs> and she has taken her college money and instead of going to college like her parents think she is she's not going to college at all she has bought this day care centre here in Ann Arbor so I'm just going to do a quick tour of it here so this is the outside so it's got some kids play areas here as you can see so it's all kind of set up for the kiddies outside as you can see there's a couple of strollers as well and then inside it's pretty much a daycare, a daycare place now this was not built by me this was built by my sims realty and this actually is in storybrook but i moved it to Ann Arbor for the purposes of this and as you can see you've got pretty much everything you need for you know them coming over she's got one computer just now and she probably will add more in depending on the kids and she's got toy boxes cookers she's got a whole bunch of stuff that will be really good for a daycare as well and she has her own kitchen to make them food and stuff she has a gated area here because she needs somewhere to sleep let's face it so she is in the basement she has her little own oasis so when the kids go away she's got a little oasis down here that she can you know go to sleep she can chill out and watch tv and she's got her bathroom and such like so this is her little palace her little oasis if you like and let's face it it's all that Raina needs at the moment i mean she doesn't have any boyfriends and she's literally just moved here um traits wise she's a bookworm she's handy she's a hopeless romantic she's nurturing and she is friendly and i just love her i think we'll make her come here to get her out the rain outfits wise and things you'll be able to see that during the you know during the let's play but at the moment as you can see she's wearing just a little cute jumper these are from anubis under the sun this jumper and this skirt and these shoes are from pixie cat so she is super cute she she's got a really nice way to her and the hair is cute as well so i love reina i think she's really cute and she's going to start our daycare profession and that's what she's going to do and that's going to be interesting for me because i've never done it believe it or not <laughs> I've never really had the wish to do it so it'll be quite interesting to see how that all pans out with her and with regards to favourites she likes beach party music cheesesteak and the colour blue which you wouldn't think if you look at all the pinks and the reds and things around here but that's what it is so that is her and that is our Raina Wasteful 
All right, and we have the Malin family. Now the Malins, the Malins, the Malins, they have a story to tell. And we're going to start off with our lovely Ashley Malin, who has got star quality. She's family orientated, clumsy, charismatic and artistic. Now, Ashley was originally your country bumpkin. She moved to the big city to pursue a career in journalism, which she is at the moment. And during her career, she was assigned to investigate Mr. Adam Malin. He was an up and common executive and he was suspected of all sorts. He was suspected of money laundering, embezzlement, blackmail, <laughs> you name it, he was expected of it. So Ashley did her duty and she integrated into his circle but when she met him the attraction was instant. Like lightning bolts, thunderstorms, Cupid's bow hut her and she was smitten by him. There was so much lust and passion and all that good stuff and she found herself spending more and more time with him. He would take her away for weekends away. They would have secret meetings in his, you know, office, you know, all that jazz. And eventually lust did turn to love and she did fall in love with him. And the whole point of her even meeting him, she put it to right to the back of her mind. She was like, no, do you know what? I love this man. I'm not going to think about it and she pushed it back and she's never questioned it since. She reported back to the employers that he was completely clean, nothing wrong with him (laughs) at all and she's never asked a question again and I guess in life you don't really ask questions if you don't want to know the answers and that is what she is at the minute. She's the mother of two beautiful boys and she lives in this gorgeous big house which we will actually look over in a second. With regards to her um, favourite. She's dark wave, potato and truffle tort and black is her favourite colour and she's a Taurus and she is just your all round sweetheart. She is doing okay in her career. She's got quite a few skills as you can see. She's got quite a few skills already and she's a level 6 in her career. She's an investigative reporter so that is our Ashley. We'll go over her outfits, you know, as we go along but basically she's got, you know, the kind of country girl shirt on. I don't really know why she's just, you know, sitting there like waiting on. And we'll move on to Daddy now. We'll move on to Mr. Daddy. Let's have a look here. Let's have a look. And this is him. This is Adam. Now, Adam, is he all these things? Is he an embezzler? Is he a money launderer? Is he? Yes. Yes, 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 he was. <laughs> and that and other things. And when him and Ashley met, he knew that she was investigating him. He knew. It was too obvious. She didn't hide it very well. Bless her wee heart. And that's why he tried to distract her with a passion. <laughs> with passion. He knew that she was attracted to him so he used that to his full advantage. Naughty, naughty Adam. But uh, he did and that's why he took her away and things like that. But what he didn't plan for was to fall head over heels in love with her. So yeah, that's that's what he did not expect was to fall in love with her and he did. Um, He's had so many girls in his past. He is the ultimate playboy, you know, the rich playboy with all the money, all the women, all the cars. And he and Ashley came along to try and take him down and they ended up falling for each other. And the passion between them is evident. I've never had two sims that want to woohoo more <laughs> in my life, like seriously. Um, When Ashley became pregnant with their firstborn Nate, he decided he was going to try and stay away from all that bad stuff but the people who worked for it would not let him and basically threatened the life of him and his family so he persuaded Ashley to come and move to Ann Arbor, basically settled down if you like. Um, I said He was running away but she didn't know that and uh, they've lived here for a while in this house and money is fairly tight because he's had to send some money back to try and get them off his case so although he is a vice president of a local and it is just a local business so it's not you know major business but it's just a local business um basically money is tight with them so you know, we'll need to see how it goes. He wants to change completely for his family. He doesn't like having not a lot of money. He doesn't like it. He's always had money and he hates kind of scrimping and saving. And he would rather that Ashley didn't have to work either. So he misses the excitement of his old life. So who knows? Who knows what's going to happen with Adam? But I think all around he's a good guy. I mean, he's star quality. He loves the cold. He's a bit of a snob. But I guess that comes from the whole having lots of money thing. 
athletic and he is friendly. So he's a deep down good guy with a few flaws. With a few flaws. And we'll move on to Nate. And I just want to draw your attention to this story progression thing that's happening here. Up at the side. If I get to Nate. Um, Bryce Bain seems a good catch, commented Raina Westfall to a close friend. It's early in the relationship, sure, but I can tell that one has potential. So, this is what I mean, guys. Story progression is going to take our other stars to places that we've not really thought of. So, Raina, <laughs> since we've been with this family for, like, I don't know, couple of hours is already bonded with someone else so this is why it's going to be so good because we're going to have the back and forth and the back and forth so it'll be interesting so this is our Nate our lovely Nate he is the firstborn of Ashley and Adam and I keep running through the walls I'm sorry about that and he's just your kind of studious boy he loves school he loves to read he's artistic loves outdoors he's really really friendly but really into studying and he is sitting down the first thing he does when he comes in does his homework gets out of the way and he's just a joy he's an absolute joy and he loves R&B music vegetarian chili and the color violet and he's also a Taurus as well so that is him so not much really to say about him because he's he's just kind of starting out as a teenager and then our baby our baby 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 here he is now if you haven't watched my LPs before then you won't know that I use a skin that causes this to happen to babies <laughs> but also the skin I love the skin so I want to keep using it but also I don't use it for long so I always age the babies up soon so don't worry too much about that and this is lovely Daniel who is perceptive and easily impressed and he is a Sagittarius he loves kids music, mushroom omelette and the colour green and he is the second born obviously of Ashley and Adam so that is them now the house that they stay in let's, let's do a bit, of a bit of a house tour as I said, money is fairly tight with them. They spend most of it on the house and decorate the house. So the top floor of the house isn't decorated to their liking, but the bottom floor is looking pretty good. So this is their house here. In relation to the rest of Ann Arbor, it's kind of out the way and it's definitely in the, the town side of things. So the, the kind of city is over here. Um, not the big city, but the kind of small-ish city and then the rest is is kind of here um you know over the, at this part of things so this is where they stay and if i just basically get this house sorted okay so you come in and you have the stairs up to the top floor to the left hand side you go in and it's their sitting room it's their you know formal sitting room lots of whites in here some really nice, um, you know, rosy coloured wallpaper. I'd probably say that was kind of dark pinky. And lots of flowers and white and white accents, you know, pretty much all over the room. So that is their living room, which is really nice. And they've got some nice paintings over here and they've got a desk that they can work at. And here's just a hallway area and you can come out here. There is their downstairs bathroom, which is a full bath. So it has everything. And... It actually goes, it's actually the master bathroom to be honest, it's not really the downstairs, it's the master bath because this is Adam and Ashley's room. So it's a really, really nice room. They spent quite a bit on that room because it's, you know, your bedroom is your sanctuary and that's kind of what they've done and then they've got the nice fitted bathroom. And over here is the kitchen. They wanted to spend the most money on their downstairs at first because they wanted appearances to appear as if you know they lose the money <coughs> excuse me but that's Adam with his kind of snobbiness he wants everyone to think he's lots of money so they spent a fortune on the downstairs of the house and the upstairs of the house hardly has anything but they've got an awesome kitchen and they've also got a downstairs bathroom for anyone that does need the toilet while visiting them it's just a toilet and I think it's actually quite a big space it might be probably better doing something else in it now what are they going to do they're going to woohoo <laughs> i told you i absolutely told you he came off that phone and they are going to woohoo okay so she's actually trying for a baby so she wants it she's like that no no you think we're woohooing i'm trying for a baby <laughs> poor guy um up here you come up into the kind of hallway here and as you can see it's fairly simple it's got some of um adam's 
not add them, sorry, neat school things and some books that Ashley had. And then over here is Nate's room and it's so pitiful and there's like no personality or nothing. We need to get money and that is the first priority for Ashley. She wants to decorate this. So she actually wants to leave it to Nate to be honest but she wants to get the money together so that he can get his bedroom sorted because it really is kind of pitiful in comparison to the rest of the house. And then over here is the sort of nursery area again. There's nothing in it apart from the changing table and a crib. So there's not much in there. But if they're going to be trying for another baby, which I cannot stop. As you know, guys, we have to let them do it. Then, you know, we probably do need a, a fairly decent nursery. <laughs> and then over here is the family bathroom family bathroom so I know it's three bedrooms essentially but it is a big house and this bedroom is huge so this could easily be converted for two or three kids like easily bunk beds single beds you know there's plenty of room for more kids over here is the garage and it is a two car garage and I guess you could fit other things in there you could fit a washer dryer in there I would imagine if you wanted to, there's also a car parking space out here as well. And I dare say you could create a room above the garage if you wanted to. I don't particularly want to, but you can. I really like the way that this is built as well. I really like the way that they've kind of built this out. I think it looks really nice. It just kind of adds to it. I mean, there's not much in the back garden really, but you could easily put some things in here. You know, you could put a horse stable in there or something if you wanted. Not that we will, but it gives you the option. And then you've got their back, their back garden. What is that? Why do we have tissues lying on the ground? That's very bizarre. <laughs> that is so bizarre. Why have we got tissues on the ground? Okay. But anyway, so this is their house and that is the Malin family. And I hope you like them as much as I do. On to the next one. And last but very not least is the nailers and we have Chuck Nailer who as you've seen from the slide is the ultimate playboy and I've called him Chuck because I am obsessed with Gossip Girl <laughs> and to me when I think of a player I think of Chuck Bass so in a way, in a way he is my ode to Chuck Bass, he doesn't look like Chuck Bass but he is my kind of ode to him, the same sort of suave, you know, good looking, you know, loves himself type behaviour. The kind of bad guy that you can't help but love. At first you hate him and you think he's just a douchebag, but then after that you're like, oh, I love you. And that's what I want Chuck to be. So basically he's the ultimate playboy, he's an entrepreneur, or so he thinks, and he lives off an allowance that his daddy gives him. So every week his daddy will put in 5,000 simoleons into his bank account for him to do as he pleases. And what Chuck pleases is to go out and party and to spend it on women and drink and dance and all that good stuff. At this point in time, he's no interest in settling down and putting roots anywhere. And that even in property, his apartment is very bland, it's 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 kind of neutral and um, I'm sure he'll, he'll sort that out but it's, it's not exactly homely if you like and he's flirty he's irresistible he's ultimately good he's charismatic and he's friendly so he'll do things that make you think he's not a good person but he is ultimately down below he's a good heart and he's a Gemini so double Double trouble, double personality, basically the good side and the bad side. And he loves blue, ratatouille and dark wave music. And yeah, so he doesn't want a job, he just wants women, can anyone tame him? And he wants to go for the master romancer lifetime wish, which is woohoo in five different places with five different sims. I have tried this lifetime wish before and it's glitched out on me. I'm hoping that it doesn't glitch out with our Chuck here. And Love is in the air for Bryce Bean and Rena Westfall. They are now in a state of relationship. So literally all I've done is went to a couple of families and this has happened. So this is why this is going to be interesting because now we need to go and see if he's good enough for Arena. Okay, is Bryce Bean? He looks okay. 
do a wee haircut, but it looks not bad. Is he good enough for Arena, though? We'll have to judge that. We will have to judge that. Living with Chuck is his sister, Kate. And she is looking quite foxy in her, her nightwear there. She's just in from the club. So, even though it's only six o'clock, the two of these guys are party animals. So, she's just decided to come and she's going to paint a picture. And it doesn't look like she's very skilled in the artistic skill. Although, if you look at Kate, she has a lot of skills. She is already up there. And one of her late time wishes to become a renaissance sim, which has reached level 10 with three different skills. She's obviously a level 10 in scuba diving, level 8 in logic, and she's getting there with her handiness. Whether that will be the one that she takes to level 10, who knows? Now, Kate is a perfectionist, hence why she wants to be a renaissance sim, because if she's going to start a skill, by God, she's going to be the best at it. So she chooses scuba diving, she's going to master that. She chooses logic, she'll master that as well. So the fact that she's came to this art easel tells me that she's pretty much going to be mastering that. She's going to be creating Picassos and all that sort of stuff. And um, skill wise, where is her skills? Mm, she's adventurous, she's a great kisser, she's a genius, she loves the cold and she's a born saleswoman and she's a young adult and she's a Taurus. She loves kids, music, grilled cheese and lime green. I'm not a fan of lime green myself to be honest. Now obviously she is the genius of the family, she's very adventurous and uh, Kate has been known to, to love a boy in her time but she's also been known to love a girl in her time as well so anything really goes with Kate. She's willing to try anything once and uh, if she doesn't like it she'll probably try it again just to make sure. She's that type of girl who will try anything once. Extremely intelligent, a perfectionist, she's clever, she's sassy and she's ready to show Anne Arbor what she is freaking made of. She's got a job as a podium polisher at the minute, to be honest. She did that on her own, as I said, you know, story progression. I'm probably just going to get her to quit it and then if she goes for it again we'll just go with it because obviously that's what the whole point in this is, is to kind of go with what they want to do when we're not controlling them. But uh, yeah, she might just be wanting to find, you know, right connections and things and I suppose that would be the good job to find connections in this city. So that is them and they receive their 5,000 simoleons from his daddy and that's really unless they get a job what they've got to live on. Their apartment is here right next to the Rhythm and Blues lounge. So they are there. I don't, is that where my, my klepto, I think my klepto girls are over here. So they're kind of right across the side from each other. So that's where they are, and I'll just drop it down here. So it's basically like a little townhouse type thing. See, there's three of them in a row. A little townhouse. And this is Ashley's, um, Ashley, Kate's bedroom, and this is Chuck's bedroom. So they're pretty much plainly decorated. They've not really made their mark or their stamp on it yet. I mean, they literally have moved in a couple of days. So give them time. And down here is their sort of living area other living arrangements with their kitchen and their little dining table and stuff like that. So, not the most glamorous apartment, but it's nice. It's a nice apartment and they have cars here as well. And they're both theirs. So they've got a sloppy jalopy and a big lemon. <laughs> so, don't know whose is whose, but that's what they have. And basically that is their little flat and that is where they are staying. And that is the end of our introductions. I hope that you enjoyed this, guys. I know that this part doesn't have any particular gameplay in it, but I do hope that you enjoyed it anyway. It's very much getting to know these guys, getting to see what is going to happen in this town, this rainy town of Ann Arbor. <laughs> and hopefully it doesn't rain the whole way through. And I'm going to be recording episodes of this, so you will have a brand new episode every Wednesday and Sunday. So you have two a week, Wednesday and Sunday, you'll have a brand new instalment of this series and I hope that you enjoy it and I hope that you love it so let me know who you like below who you're loving who you're maybe hating and and where you maybe if you have any ideas of of what you would like to see and um, but, but bearing in mind it's very much about them and story progression oh. if story progression makes too many major changes we might go back to EA's own story progression but I would like to keep that story progression on for now and see how it goes. So I'll leave it there guys. And I shall talk to you in my very next part. See you later guys. Bye.